Imagine being stranded on a raft in the middle of the vast Pacific Ocean with no food or water. You're a thousand miles from the nearest island. What would you do to survive? Today, we are diving into the awe-inspiring life of Louis Zamperini. His World War II story is a gripping tale of resilience, survivor, and the unbreakable human spirit. He survived on that raft for 47 days. The American airman was then captured by the Japanese. Unspeakable violence and malnourishment followed. He was beaten, kicked, and became as thin as a skeleton. And those memories haunted him for years after the war. How did he survive these unimaginable audios? How did he overcome the trauma? The biggest takeaway from Louis' experience is to play the cards that life deals you. Louis was stranded on a raft with two other men that had survived the plane crash, Phil and Mac. On that raft, Louis made the best use of limited resources. He played dead to attract birds that he could catch for food. His resourcefulness didn't end there. He also repurposed an air pump to collect water when it rained. Louis demonstrated that in the face of adversity, you have two choices. You can throw your hands up and surrender. Or you can make the most of your environment and available resources. Louis asked himself, There are birds. How can I attract them to the raft as a source of food? Likewise, you should ask yourself, What resources do I have? And how can I use them? Am I doing my best? And I challenge you to keep getting better especially when you face adversity. Louis' mind was one of his biggest resources. He added numbers in his head to keep his mind sharp. He also could make believe meals for everyone. When they imagined eating the meals, they spoke so vividly that the hunger faded. Remember that your mind is your biggest resource. Louis was also big on hope. He and Phil kept their spirits high. They talked about what they'd do after the war. Louis wanted to turn his hometown's train station into a nice restaurant with a bar. Phil wanted to be a school teacher in Indiana. These dreams were a beacon of light in their darkness. It made them want to continue living. And the only way to do so was to solve their problems. Mac didn't take part in those conversations. When he spoke, it was about death. His lack of hope may have overpowered whatever energy he saved. He died after 33 days on the raft. Louis and Phil's hope helped them stay strong for 47 other days. They didn't just dream of their future. They hoped their current situation would improve. When they ran out of water for 7 days, they prayed for rain. Less than an hour later, whether out of divine intervention or sheer luck, rain poured. It's common to feel hopeless. But when hopelessness attacks you, ask yourself, what can I look forward to after everything is over? What can I hope for to improve my situation? These questions can rekindle the flame of hope even in the darkest times. Louis' journey also shows the power of dignity. After 47 days, Louis and Phil reached an island. Unfortunately, that island was Japanese controlled, and the two were taken prisoner. While in captivity, his guards would throw rice balls on the floor, making him search his unlit cell for his meal. Louis was then transferred to Tokyo. One of his captors, known as The Bird, tortured Louis physically and emotionally. He beat Louis almost daily, sometimes knocking him unconscious. One day, the bird made Louis hold a plank above his head until he fainted. Although his dignity was tested, Louis held on to it. The Japanese asked him, Do you want food, water, accommodation, and freedom from violence? Just make a propaganda broadcast. Condemn the US war effort. He refused. Louis showed that even when severely abused, 
one can choose to retain their self-respect. People can try to take your dignity, but only you can surrender it. Louis kept his dignity as he knew that there were more important things than his own personal comfort. The next time your dignity is tested, ask yourself, what's most important to me? But perhaps the most remarkable aspect of Louis' life is his forgiveness. After the war, he suffered from relentless nightmares. Memories of his tormentor, the bird, haunted him. Vengeful thoughts consumed his mind. He sought solace in alcoholism, using it to numb the pain. Soon, alcohol wasn't enough. He was saving money to fly to Japan to kill the bird. It was a cycle of despair. His wife asked for a divorce. But then something extraordinary happened. Louis listened to a sermon by Billy Graham, and his perspective began to shift. He stopped focusing on the torment he endured during the war. Instead, he remembered the miracles that had sustained him. Did Louis' war experiences change? No, his interpretation did. This gave him the strength to forgive the bird. Love replaced the hate I had for you. Which led to a profound transformation in his life. He gave up alcohol, smoking, and bitterness. And he never dreamed of the bird again. His wife decided to stay with him, and they enjoyed 52 years of marriage until she died. Louis died at age 97. All of us have been wronged. But the question is, do we stay bitter and dream of revenge? Or do we choose the path of forgiveness, as Louis did, ultimately finding peace and a brighter future? Louis was able to heal when he forgave. When he hated the bird, he was hurting himself, not the bird. Forgiveness doesn't mean not seeking justice. It means not seeking revenge. Louis sought justice in perhaps the best way possible. He organized camps to turn troubled youth around, so others would not experience the violence he had endured. If you want to learn more about Louis' life, check out his memoir, the book Unbroken, or the movie with the same name. It's a story that shows us how we can rise above even the harshest of conditions and find redemption. It's a reminder we can learn from the past, transform our futures, and truly live a life that's worth telling the world about. If you found this video inspiring, please share this with someone who needs it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.